Welcome to of homeschooling with Zena. <laughs> and oh no, this mic. Oh my god, it's so sensitive. I gotta watch it. Like watch how I touch things. I can't shake it or anything. It's really crazy. Okay, so we're still on India, mm -hmm. and um, today we're learning Siddhartha Gautama, the Buddha. Okay, so this is the lesson. Then we have two more lessons after that. I can't wait to get to the Monkey King. So let's do it. I think the other lesson, Zena's not going to be here because, um, you know, it's kind of it's kind of difficult doing those lessons very fast if she's if Zena is around. So I would do these lessons once, like without Zena, and then I would do the lessons with Zena, but not on camera. So you understand? So because it can go faster like that, especially for these kinds of. Uh, the course is going to be ending soon. They're going to be erasing the courses. So I have to speed it up. That means uh, Zena won't be in the next one. Okay? So let's continue. Okay. Um, hmm. The internet is pretty slow today, huh? Okay. Lesson five, Siddhartha. Can you say Siddhartha? Gautama. I don't know how to say that one. Gautama. The Buddha. Gautama. Let's see if we can make this a full screen. Okay. So. Yikes. Let's look on the globe. So we're going to look at the globe. And here's the Indian subcontinent. We do remember what a, a subcontinent is. It's a large piece of land that is not, but it's not as large as a continent. Okay. It's not big enough to be a continent. Exactly. Let's look on a globe and find a subcontinent called India. Well, this is not a globe, it's a map. We've been learning about a very old religion that started in India. What is the name of the religion? Hinduism. Yes. Okay. Let's find the Himalaya mountain what is, on the map. What is the name of the river near which Hinduism began? Near the Indus River. Right, and the Indus River is right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Oh. So, yeah, we found the Indus River. We learned about another river that is sacred to the Hindu people. What is what is the name of that river? You remember that sacred river? Ganges yes, river. the Ganges River. Where is the Ganges River on the map? So we can find... It's right here. Under the Himalaya mountain. Yep. Oh, see, under, yeah, it should be under the Himalayas. Okay. Um, let's find the Himalaya mountains on the map. So here is the Himalayan mountains, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's continue. All right, so near the Himalayan mountains, another religion began in India. Oh, another religion. First we had Hinduism, now we have another one. This religion is called Buddhism. Mm -hmm. And those who follow it are called Buddhist. Buddhist. Buddhism. Mm -hmm. According to Buddhism, a man named Siddhartha Gautama, Gautama 
discovered a way for people to live peaceful lives. Do you know what peaceful lives mean? It means lives is very peaceful. It's very good. Yeah, it's no war. It's very quiet. Mm-hmm. There's no pressure from the society mm-hmm. to do homework or to go to school <laughs> or to drive a car. It's just a very peaceful life. Okay, watch you don't hit this thing. You touch this, it's done. Okay, so let's say those words together. Buddhism, Buddhist, Buddhist. Siddhartha, Siddhartha. Gautama. Siddhartha, Gautama. Here is a story that Buddhists tell about Siddhartha Gautama's life, who came to be known as the Buddha. Oh, we're going to have another reading rainbow. Yes. Okay. Yes, this is will be fun. Siddhartha, the young prince. A long time ago, at the foot of the high Himalayas, a baby boy was born to a noble king and his gentle queen. The king and queen named their son Siddhartha, and they loved him very much. They didn't ever want him to be hurt or sick or in trouble. So the king built a magnificent palace for Siddhartha and filled it with the greatest wonders in the kingdom. The best musicians performed their most beautiful music day and night. Prince Siddhartha slept on the softest silks, ate the tastiest foods, and played with the cleverest toys. The palace had a lush garden, full of sweet-smelling flowers and wide, clear pools. And around the gardens and the entire palace, the king built a high wall. He wanted to make sure that his son never saw pain, sickness, or suffering. So he never let Siddhartha look over the wall or leave the palace, ever. Prince Siddhartha grew up to be a kind and gentle young man, but he was troubled. He loved his father, enjoyed his friends, and had everything his heart desired. But he wasn't happy, and he didn't know why. More and more, he wondered about the outside world. What is outside the palace walls? he asked his father. There's nothing for you to see out there, the king answered. Stay here in the palace, eat the good food, and enjoy the music. But Siddhartha kept asking, and finally, the king agreed to let a chariot driver take him out and see the city. At first, the prince was delighted. How wonderful it is to be outside the palace walls, he said. Then the chariot turned a corner, and Siddhartha saw an old man with long gray hair, wearing torn, dirty rags. His skin was wrinkled, his eyes were dim, and he had no teeth. With two sticks, the old man dragged himself along the road. What is that? Prince Siddhartha asked the chariot driver. It cannot be a man. Why is he wrinkled and why is his hair gray instead of black like mine? What's wrong with his eyes? Where are his teeth? Tell me, what is this I see? That is an old poor man, the chariot driver said. He was once young, strong, and handsome like you. But now he can barely see or walk, and he has to beg for food. Everyone will grow old and feeble in time, even you, my prince. A few moments later they passed a man sitting on the sidewalk, moaning loudly in pain. What's wrong with the man? asked Siddhartha. That man, said the driver, is in great pain. He has a sickness that cannot be cured. Siddhartha fell into a thoughtful silence. The chariot driver drove out into the countryside. There, 
sitting alone and silent under a tree, was a man with a calm expression on his face. He was dressed in a tattered yellow robe of the roughest cloth. Who is that man? asked Siddhartha. And why does he look so peaceful? Doesn't he know about old age, sickness, and suffering? He knows, replied the chariot driver. But he's given up all his money and fine things. He has decided to devote himself to searching for the truth. What truth? asked Siddhartha. The truth about why people suffer, replied the chariot driver. Siddhartha was very sad when he returned to the palace. He had never known that people lived in pain and suffering. The luxuries all around him seemed wrong. So he took off his fine clothes, dressed in a coarse yellow robe, and went out into the world. For six years Siddhartha wandered alone, trying to understand all that he had seen. He had no fine things and very little to eat or drink. Sometimes he remembered his family and friends. Sometimes he had terrible nightmares. All the while he was trying to understand the right way for people to live. One day, as Siddhartha was sitting beneath a tree, thinking quietly, he felt that he understood. He had become enlightened which means he became wise and aware of new truths. And so he became known as the Buddha, which means the one who knows or the one who is awake. To be enlightened, Buddha said, means to live a life of goodness. It means always trying to think and act the right way. It means never lying, stealing, or cheating. It means not wanting too many things, for that can make people unhappy. It means always being kind to animals. Buddha taught that we should be merciful to all living things, humans and animals alike. Okay, we're back. So, did you turn on the camera? Yep. <laughs> the speaker? Yep. So let me ask you a question. Um, would you like to be Siddhartha? Why or why not? Don't touch that desk. Um, I ask you a question. Mm -hmm. want to be Siddhartha. Would you want to be this prince Siddhartha or not? Yes. Why? <laughs> would you rather have all his money or would you want to be after? He went out and he took all his, he left everything and he become poor and hungry and he wants to, to find the truth, right? Would you want to do that or would you rather live in the palace with the king and have good music and good food? I won't live in the palace. You won't live in the palace. It was boring staying in there. Years pass, it's become boring. So you'd rather leave, mm -hmm. and be, and but you would be poor, and no, f you have to beg for food maybe, right? Okay, more and more people heard Buddha's ideas and began to follow his teachings. Buddha's followers went in different directions, and soon the religion called Buddhism had begun. Um, why does it begun? Past tense. Um, I also don't want to be him. Why? Because, um, he's a boy. Okay. <laughs> Buddhists followed no gods, but believed that each person, person should try to live a life of goodness. Today... Buddhism is followed by millions of people throughout Asia and in other places around the world. Okay? So Buddhism became very popular.
popular because of him. It started in India and, and it spread China. to China. Yeah. Like that um, was Buddha Siddhartha Gautama a king or a prince? A prince. Very good. What is a prince? Uh, <laughs> a prince is the son of a king. King and a queen. Good. What was one of the things Prince Siddhartha saw when he left his palace? He saw some old men that are poor and need to beg for food mm -hmm. and money. Mm -hmm. Did he like this? Probably not. <laughs> Will one of you be Siddhartha? Me? No. no, I'd rather stay in the palace. <laughs> <laughs> I had enough of being poor and, and <laughs> you know, sick and old. So I, 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 I'm asking the one that's watching the video. Oh, would you like to be poor and like to be Siddhartha? <laughs> Siddhartha... Gotama became, oh, wait, what was one of the things, oh, yeah, we answered that. Siddhartha Gotama became known by a new name. What was it? What was his new name? You mean that related? Yeah. Gotama? Mm-mm. Start with a B. Oh. Boo Boo Buddha. Buddha. Mm-hmm. Buddha. Buddha is him. Um, what do we call the religion that is based on the Buddhist teachings? Buddhism. Oh, teaches that. No, what is the name of it? Name, Buddhism. Yeah. So, the Buddha and the Buddhism. Mm -hmm. Wow, well, if you are poor, you will be stinky. Not all the time. Some poor people are clean. Um, I'm poor and I'm clean. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not very poor. You still got money. <laughs> these, these, okay. So now you're going to see it's going to turn into the material. So the most... <sighs> Zena, <sighs> stop it, okay? You're, gonna t you're hitting the mic. Come, come back. But don't touch the mic. So this is the reason why the next time... I'm going to do it myself because Zena, she can't sit still in one spot for like 15 minutes so without messing up the stuff. So I think it's more efficient if I do it by myself. So this is the last time you're going to see Zena uh, for a little while. She may come in. Sometimes I may have her, but most of the time not because it's kind of inconvenient. And uh, I want the, the recording to be perfect. No mess ups, you know. And efficient. So, mm -hmm. please like and subscribe and follow. Or you can even buy the course. Because uh, there's a lot to learn. Okay, so this is a Siddhartha um, activity sheet. Bye. Think about the story of Siddhartha, the young prince. Read the words inside the leaves. Color all the leaves that tell about the people. Dark green. Color all the leaves that tell about the place, light green. Color all the words that tell about Siddhartha's feelings, yellow. Color the rest of the picture using colors you think are best. So this is very interesting. Okay? So it's pretty much over. And this kind of stuff I just do with my daughter. Remaining. Okay? So it's not really that much amount of time remaining. So goodbye, guys. And say goodbye to Zena. Yes. Because they said it's adding the heat too. Goodbye.